Hello, I'm David Roger, General Counsel for the Las Vegas Police Protective Association. In this video, I wanted to talk to you about the plain feel doctrine. Uh, and the case is Minnesota versus Dickerson. Uh, it's a U.S. Supreme Court case that uh, allows you to conduct this type of search of an individual. A and it really is the same rationale as the plain view doctrine that we talked about in another segment. Uh, there are three elements. Uh, first, uh, you have to be in a position to lawfully pat down an individual. And so, you know, under Terry versus Ohio, if you have reasonable suspicion to believe that a person uh, is uh, armed and dangerous, you can do a pat down of their clothing. Uh, so you have to have a, a, a lawful pat down of the individual. As you're patting down the individual, uh, the item in the person's uh, pocket or on the person's uh, body it has to be readily apparent as contraband by feel. And so uh, it, you may have some experience in patting down people for uh, weapons and feeling drugs or um, narcotics paraphernalia. And so as you're patting down the individual based upon your feel, the shape and size, if you believe it's contraband, then the plain field doctrine will allow you to pull the substance out of the individual's pocket. And the third element is there can't be any additional intrusion. And so the court cases have said that, you know, during your pat down, you can't uh, manipulate the item or, or grab uh, onto the item uh, any differently than a regular pat down. And, and so under those circumstances, you can seize the item. So you have to have a lawful pat down. It has to be readily apparent to you as contraband based upon your feel of the uh, substance. And third, there can't be any additional intrusion. You can't manipulate the item or pull or tug it at the item. It has to be a, a pat down. And under those circumstances, you can seize the item. Uh, this is important because uh, the individual ha who has talked to you about uh, search incident to an arrest, uh, that individual uses an, an example uh, of uh, an individual who says that you know, while you're doing a pat down, they have drugs in, in the person's pocket. And as we discussed in a previous video, uh, you can arrest the person because you have probable cause to believe that the person has drugs in his or her pocket, and you can search incident to an arrest. Uh, the individual who has been training field training officers, and this training has uh, flowed uh, to the actual officers on the street, is that you can't search incident to an arrest. You have to go through this manipulation as in the plain field doctrine. So that may sound confusing, and these videos are intended to clarify it. So in a situation where you're patting down an individual, you ask them what they have in their pocket, uh, and they say that they have uh, methamphetamine or, or drugs or any other type of contraband, you arrest them there because you have probable cause to believe that they're in possession of controlled substance or possession of a firearm or possession of uh, some other contraband. You hook them up, you search them incident to an arrest. Conversely, uh, if uh, you are patting down an individual and an individual says that he or she doesn't have anything in their pockets, and pursuant to the plain field doctrine, uh, you feel substance that you believe to be uh, drugs in their pocket, the plain field doctrine allows you to go in and seize the item. I hope this clarifies the I issue for you. It's alarming that uh, this poor training has kind of filtered through to uh, the officers, but I hope it's clear now. As always, if you have any legal questions, please contact me at droger at lvppa.com or follow us on our YouTube page. Thank you very much.